What's going on everyone? Welcome into Keystone Academy. So I was recently sent this picture from a family member and essentially they just asked me if I could remove all the extra people and objects from the picture so they could make a canvas of it. And obviously there are a lot of people in this picture. There's umbrellas and all kinds of extra stuff, stuff that we just don't want in the image. Uh, the point is to just have the location and show off the landscape. And in doing that, this is a very good picture, but yeah, it's it's crowded. There's, there's a lot going on. Um, so I already went ahead and actually edited this picture. So I will go ahead and show you, obviously this is the before and this is the after. So all the people are gone, all the umbrellas are gone. Once again, I'll show you the before and back to the after. So this was a lot of work. This probably took me uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour to an hour and a half. But yeah, it was, it was a pretty satisfying edit to do. And beyond what I did here, I did actually take this into Lightroom and crop it a little bit and you know did some color editing to it as well. But that was the general uh, premise of, of the little project here. But I'm gonna show you a couple techniques and allow you to kind of try them out and see what works best for you. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to take my original down here and I'm going to duplicate it so that we have something to work with here. And we'll call this new edit, hit enter, uh, and we're gonna put this on top. So I am going to make this finished edit go away. Not that it really matters since our new edit is on top. And what we wanna do is we want to zoom in here. So I'm gonna press control and then plus a bunch of times. Um, and let's find a good example to start with. So let's start with some of these folks in the water. Now, since they are in the water for a circumstance like this, where the background's a little more uniform uh, and there's not a bunch of different stuff going on, there's not a bunch of shadows to worry about, we will use the spot healing brush tool. Now, if you've seen, which I'm sure you have because the ads are everywhere, if you've seen the ads for the new Google Pixel, they are really hyping up their ability within their photo app uh, to remove background people, you know, objects, things in the backgrounds of photos. Uh, and essentially, that is what Photoshop's spot healing brush does. So to show you an example here, let's take this woman and this child here in the water. And I'm going to take my brush size down a little bit, let's say nine pixels. Uh, and I just want to basically color these folks in. Um, I want to make sure I get what is under the water here, uh, you know, get the floaty, get all of her head, get all of the kid's head, um, just kind of click and drag around and almost like you're just kind of selecting this portion of the image. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and then I release and boom, they're gone. Uh, basically what this did was take uh, samplings from the surrounding area and Photoshop basically just made a best guess of what was supposed to be there based on the background. And this isn't perfect, but like I said, if you do have a relatively uniform background, that's gonna work pretty well. And if you look really closely, you can kind of tell that this was edited, but we are at 200% here. Um, and if I zoom all the way out where we're seeing the full image, you would never know that that was edited or that there were people there to begin with. Um, so if I show you what it looked like before, you can see them over here and then after they're just gone. Um, so that is the first example and I'll go ahead and show you one more time. Let's use these two folks right here. Uh, so same thing, I'll zoom in a little bit more. Um, and yeah, we just want to kind of color them in basically. So clicking and dragging and making sure I'm getting all of them. You wanna make sure you get a little bit over, especially because my brush hardness is not on 100, which you don't really want it to be because uh, you want it to be you know, a little smoother. Um, so something like that should be good. And when I release, all of a sudden they are just gone. And this is what it looked like with them there and after, before and after, and once again, as you zoom out, even if you think you kind of see the edit, you're not gonna see it with the full size of the image. Um, so that is one way of doing that.
the other way, which is useful for more kind of fine tuning and is frankly better when your background isn't as uniform, that option is going to be the clone stamp tool. Now the clone stamp tool, essentially what it does is it takes a sampling that you select from a part of the image and it allows you to paint that part of the image to another portion of the image. So for example, uh, let's take, let's see. Um, Let's take this woman right here. Uh, she's kind of in a weird part of this wave. Um, so there's a little bit of the choppiness here, but then also at the top, there's kind of just the, the flatter part uh, of, of the water here. So what I'm going to do is have my clone stamp tool selected. And if you hold Alt on PC or Option on Mac, you're gonna see this little target appear. Now we don't want to use this target on our subject. This is what we're going to use to sample another portion of the frame. Um, I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit more here just so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, but if I hold down Alt and click this part of the image right here, and then I go over to my subject, you can kind of see uh, the color appear on her a little bit. Um, and I have my hardness way down. So if we go and look at our brush here, I have my hardness at zero, my size at 10 pixels, and you can bring the hardness up a little bit, but generally speaking, you do want the hardness to be lower uh, just to smooth it out as much as possible. You don't want it to be rough shapes where you're painting you know, pixel by pixel hard color because that's not going to look as smooth. So that being said, I'll get rid of this. Um, we just want to kind of color her in. And you can see as I'm moving, the little target to my left is moving as well. So what that's signifying is that it's actually sampling that part of the image as I move. So as I move, what it's sampling moves, which is good because as you do that, it's going to not just sample the one part of the image that you originally selected, it's going to change what it's selecting or change what it's using to reference um, so that when you are painting over something, you're not just painting one little section all over your, your image. So it's gonna look a lot smoother. So this looks a lot better. Obviously her head's still there and her arm is still there. Um, but what we can do is maybe take a sample from somewhere over here just to change it up a little bit. There's a little more texture in the wave there. Um, so maybe I can just kind of drag around, smooth it out. Uh, and then for her head here, since this is kind of above this wave, we'll use something back here as a sample um, and just paint it over. Uh, and as you can see, she's pretty much gone. You, you would really never know, even if you were looking at this, this zoomed in, you would never know that there was ever any editing done to this. Um, so this is before and this is after. And once again, just to show you kind of proof of concept here, um, zooming all the way out or relatively all the way out here, uh, you're never gonna know that any editing was done here. Um, so you can see our before and one, two, three groups of people that we removed in the after. Um, so those are just a couple examples there and I'll do one more with the clone stamp tool. Um, but let's take a little bit more difficult of an example. Let's take uh, these folks right here. Uh, so this will be a good example for us to kind of uh, show a little diversity in backgrounds and, and make it a little more difficult. So if I select somewhere like here, and I'm actually gonna make my size a little bit bigger since these folks are a bit closer. So yeah, we'll pick something like over here and we're just gonna start painting over them. And once again, you can see my target brush is moving as I move and this looks pretty dang smooth already. Um, usually while I'm doing something like this, I'll kind of change it up. So I'll maybe switch sides um, just to kind of get a variety of samples and make sure I'm not using kind of the same thing too much. So I'll continue again, kind of get this to smooth out here. And as you can see, 
um, there's kind of a little bit of a change in color and tone between this rough part up here and then there's kind of the smooth section right here before the big wave. So I wanna make sure I'm sampling that portion for this part of the uh, painting, so to speak. And you'll notice if I click and drag to the right here, I'm actually painting what was on this gentleman right here on this woman over here. And that's because while you're still clicked and dragged within a movement uh, or within a stamp, so to speak, you are still referencing what was there originally. So if I wanted to sample where my target is now, which is over this guy, and I don't wanna paint the guy onto the woman, I would just release. Uh, and then if I start to do that again, you'll see it'll actually take what's there now as opposed to what was there before. Uh, so we'll make this a little smoother. We'll kind of take some stuff from over here, just kind of smooth this out, maybe go even a little further down, just kind of paint some extra stuff in here, just making it look natural. Uh, and now we're down to the wave. So we'll hold Alt and click on our wave over here. Um, and we just want to paint this in. So we'll do something like that. Maybe get a sample from over here, get the shoe covered. And obviously I'm repainting the shoe again, so we want to stop doing that. Uh, we gotta be careful not to get this guy's hat in or anything. Uh, so we'll go back and touch this up at the end. But now for this shallow water here, kind of this, um, this tide, uh, we will go ahead and get them down here at their feet do that again go here and we're going to remove this guy anyway so honestly i don't feel bad about painting over his head so we'll just go ahead and and get rid of his head as well uh, and this was kind of the process that i took when i was doing this i just kind of did everything as i went just kind of picked a section started with some people and if i had to erase other people in the process you know they were all going anyway so we can still see a little bit of them here so we will go ahead and continue this on uh, throughout this gentleman here. Um, and yeah, I think that's starting to look pretty good. And one thing to keep in mind too is uh, kind of the three-dimensionality to a picture or at least what our eyes perceive as three-dimensionality. So if you're painting over something like this, uh, say this wave, for example, this wave, you know, is obviously crashing down onto this part down here. So in theory, this wave is kind of on top. So because of that, uh, I want to paint the wave on last because you can kind of see at the bottom here where we edited this, it there's not really a smooth line between the wave and uh, this kind of tide right here, the shallow tide. Um, so Let's take an, a sample from this line right here where you can actually kind of see um, the change over from one to the other. And you can see I'm painting and dragging that on. We'll take a sample from the other side, really kind of smooth that out. Um, and yeah, there you go. Now you kind of have that, that depth and that extra layer of realism that kind of will make this a little more believable. And once again, we can zoom out here. Obviously, there's just a, a headless guy here, or I guess you can't really see the guy at all. It just looks like a chair with a towel on it. Um, but yeah, if we zoom out, we'll zoom out a little bit more uh, and look at our image as a whole here. And we will look at our before and our after. So these folks are gone. This guy's head is gone. Um, you know, you would you would never know <laughs> that that they were there in the first place. Uh, so that's basically the two main methods that I use for removing unwanted people or objects from a photo. And if you have any questions about this or any other Photoshop tips and tricks, let us know in the comments below and we can either get back to you or maybe even make a video on it in the future. If you learned a little something from this video, please drop a like. It helps us out a bunch. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updated on all our video production and tutorial content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you next time.